How difficult is it to go from the back of the grid to the front? In this video, we're going to ride on board in a race that I did just over a month ago to describe the techniques and decisions that I made when carving my way through a Formula Ford field. So this Formula Ford race is something that I do every year at the classic Formula Ford festival with my dad. He's got a couple of cars um, and it's just a fantastic kind of social weekend with my family there. I absolutely love it. These cars are completely pure. Um, they're all very close. It's a good grid, maybe 22, 23 cars. Uh, but I'm starting at the back here because unfortunately in the first race I had a uh, gearbox failure or a gear linkage failure. Everything was uh, feeling fairly good and uh, then the gear linkage snapped. You have to start the second race, which this is, at the back of the grid. So here I am, 20 third position I believe, uh, dead last on the grid at Brands Hatch. So I'm just trying to find my marker here, looking for the lights all the way down there. It's a long way away and away we go. So I've got a decent star, not too bad. I beat the green car to my left and here at the beginning all you're trying to do is look for the space, look for the gap and thankfully everyone kind of parks up on the inside, just got past that guy pretty well. Um, and it was it was damp conditions as you can see here so it means that it was a bit a bit tricky so on the green flag lap on the way around to the grid I was looking for all of the grip trying to understand um, where the patches were now you can see that the racing line is pretty pretty dry here that guy in front just made a mistake so I'm gonna try and nip up the inside of him it's very close up into Surtees and I think I'm going to try and dive down the inside here into clear ways. You can just line people up there. And this guy actually got a good run around the outside. You've got to be careful there. You could get, see me getting some oversteer. You've got to be careful that you don't run into the car on the outside there. And that was my first lap. I managed to overtake 12 cars on that first lap, uh, which, <laughs> which was pretty lucky, to be honest, because they, 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 the way the grid kind of opened up there was, um, was, was lucky for me. Just dived up the inside going into clear ways here. And that's most of the mid-pack done. You, now you've got the 10 guys at the front who are, who are really quick and, and, and on the pace. So I can see that I've got a bit of work to do now. So it's a case of getting, getting my head down, trying not to make any mistakes, pushing um, as, as much as I can. And I'm thinking to myself in the car now, wow, that was a, a lucky first lap. Um, let, me, let me try and catch these guys up. Uh, I thought it was going to take me a lot longer to get through the traffic because... Even if you're a bit quicker than, than these guys, it can take time to get through. But luckily, those first couple of laps, I managed to get through the traffic without it costing me too much time. And obviously, even if it costs you two tenths of a second for each position that you're overtaking, that can accumulate to probably three or four seconds, which then with the quick guys at the front, you've really got to struggle to, to catch them back up again. So I can see here, I was actually, it was a bit of a guess with the setup of the car before we went into the race. Um, and that was because it had been changeable conditions running up through testing and qualifying, and we hadn't had a properly dry session. So this is the only race that I do in this car each, each year. You know, I, I hadn't driven this car before this season. Um, and so I'm not as quick with the setup changes because I don't know the car that well. Managed to just dive up the inside of, of uh, somebody there going into clearways. Now I've got a really quick driver in front of me called Rick Morris. He, uh, he's been racing Formula Fords for decades and is super fast. He actually raced against Ayrton Senna back in the day and beat him. So he knows these cars really well and is a quick driver. But I can see now that I'm actually catching me up reasonably well going into paddock. Uh, I'm feeling pretty confident in the car. The balance, I was surprised, as I just mentioned, at how good the balance was um, before, how good the balance was throughout the race. And um, sometimes with setup, you know, it's never quite that the car's absolutely perfect. So one of the, the skills that a racing driver has, a good driver, with race pace especially, is being able to adapt Team Rick up here, up the inside. And actually that white car that's just gone off is unfortunately me, my father. Um, he was running in second position 
uh, at that point and I could see him and uh, he, he, he actually had a problem with his gear stick and it wouldn't go into second gear and when it did it popped in and locked the rears up so this was a big shame for me because I was thinking oh I, uh, I might be able to share the podium with my dad so I think I'm in third position at the moment um, we've got the championship leader in front of us in the orange car Mark Armstrong uh, I think his uh, he was he was doing a good job on this weekend, but you can see that the rear's a bit loose on his car. He was struggling to turn it into Graham Hill there. Going back to the setup, when you get into the race, it's very, very unusual for the car to be absolutely perfect all the way through the race. And usually you're dealing with uh, an imbalance in the car. Um, just gonna try and sit in Mark's toe here, see if I can get a good run. Form, the Formula 4 toe slipstream effect is massive, so you can see here I'm really catching him up. And kind of Mark went across and then came back down on me, but I was already in the right position to get past him, and, and that's done. So going back to what I was saying about the um, the setup, it, it's rare that it, it's, it's bang on straight away. And so you'll always have to change your technique um, as you're going through the race. And... Think about how the car's sliding, how the car's sitting in the corner. So imagine you're going into a corner and you're constantly limited by the rear. The rear of the car sliding more than you want. Well, in that case, you want to think about actually how you are coming off the brakes to give the rear of the car some more grip. So if you come off the brakes a little bit earlier with a little bit of a lighter pressure, then it means that actually you'll allow the front of the car to pick itself up just a little bit, transfer some more of the weight and the grip to the rear of the car, and therefore you'll have a better balanced car. So what you should always be thinking about, rather than thinking about trail braking from one specific point to another, is actually how the balance of the car is. And then that dictates how you trail brake into a corner, because you always want to be using all the grip available from each of the four tyres. So here we are up ahead, that one car up ahead of me, the blue car, is Tim Harvey, touring car legend. Um, we are now actually lapping some of the guys in front of us. Um, I've just got my head down trying to catch Tim up. And I, Tim's unlucky here. Look, he's the second car in front of me and he's got caught up on these cars. So I'm smiling in my helmet because that's actually just helped me by a second or two to catch him up. Getting in this back marker's toe just to help myself a little bit. It's always a little bit difficult with these guys to know exactly where they're going to go. But luckily, for me at least, I caught them on the straight and I could get past them. Um, I'm again praying that Tim gets caught up behind these guys going into Drew's. And look, they are getting in the way a little bit. Tim's going to... Is he going to dive around the outside? And actually, yeah, they've fallen for me a little bit badly. But we've got enough pace to get around the outside of them and it hasn't cost me too much time. So I've managed to take a load of time out of Tim here because unfortunately he's the one that's getting to the traffic um, first, which is always more difficult than, uh, than the second car. You kind of remind the guys that you're coming through. So here I'm just, uh, I was surprised actually, as I've mentioned a couple of times, how quickly I managed to get through the traffic. And um, there is actually another car in front of Tim, but that's in uh, that's a car who's in a different tr um, class to to me. So um, so Tim is for the for the class win and second overall. Coming up to the back marker here, Tim's on the wet stuff on the inside, so that's going to affect his braking slightly. And now. I know that we're going to be able to at least have an attempt at overtaking him. Now, th these are short races. I think it's 15 laps around the Brands Indy circuit, so it's uh, probably a 13 or 14 minute race. And I'm going to try and get the job done on Tim as soon as possible, so he doesn't have time to defend too much. Couldn't make a move there. Tim went in pretty hot. Now I'm just going to try and sit in the toe. So rather than me lunge him going into clearways, I thought it was best to sit behind him, see if I can get a good toe coming down the start finish straight and get past him on the straight. It's always better to do that, it's easier, but Tim's wise to that with all his experience, managed to block me, but he has run a little bit wide here. He's defended again. I didn't want to dive up the inside of him there because of the, uh, the wet 
line on the inside of the track and shoot past the corner. You can see it's kind of affected him coming out of there, but I've got enough pace on him. Oh, that wasn't very good. But I've got enough pace on him that I can just sit here now. I want to try and get it done as soon as possible, but I've not got too much pressure with the laps. There's still three or four laps left, I believe. And here we go, diving up the inside of him. I thought he was going to cover that one off because he was defensive everywhere else. Now we're wheel to wheel, but I've got the inside of the line, got the inside line coming in, into paddock, and his engine's a little bit stronger than mine there. But I'm on the inside, I'm going to break a little bit later than him and uh, get the job done. Now I just take it back on the normal racing line and we're done. So because of the previous three or four laps and how I caught him, I think I was like three or four tenths quicker than him on average. So I just want to keep everything tidy. You've always got to be a bit careful that I haven't taken too much out of the tyres or got the tyre temp and pressure up too high and that Tim could come back at me a bit later in the race. So I do want a bit of a buffer. So I'm gonna get my head down for a few laps. And um, I mean, that's what you should be thinking about when you're, when you're in the race like this. If, you're, uh, if, you're, if the guy's right behind you, you wanna try and pull a little bit of space out on him so that you've got, you know, you've got that safety margin just in case the tires go off, just in case something happens, in case you come around to some bat markers and um, and you get kind of tripped up or caught up behind them. Luckily, the, the, the circuit's kind of opened up for me, so I was pretty lucky there that when I was catching Tim, the, bat, the, the, the slower bat markers were there to kind of slow him down a little bit, and um, Tim's a very, uh, a very fair driver, giving people lots of space on the track, so he was pretty careful going through that traffic, so really helped me to catch him up, and then as I was the second one along, Obviously, they, uh, they were aware that the, the faster traffic was coming through. So I just whisked forward a little bit because I was all by myself and there wasn't too much going on. I was just trying to keep everything tidy. As I mentioned, there was a, an, another driver in front of me, but I was only catching him by a tenth or two a lap, so there was no way that I was going to... Um, I was going to catch him. He actually started on pole position um, and, and, it, and he went. So uh, by the time I got through all the traffic and caught up the actual distance um, that I was at the back of the grid, there was no way that I was going to catch him. So I was really happy with the class win there, uh, second overall. It was a lot of fun. These Formula Ford cars are so simple and uh, the racing is always great. So little shake of the fist there. Give my mum a wave in the grandstand on the uh, on the outside. Uh, I was I was pretty excited because I didn't think that I was going to work my way through the field so quickly. So that that was a lot of fun there. Now that you've learned how to overtake, check out this short playlist that I've put together for you to learn how to get faster on track.